everybody, welcome back to Maya Mondays. So last week um, on the YouTube channel, Caesar asked if there was a way to make a tutorial showing polygon objects dynamically driving a particle system that has an instance piece of a particle instancer on it that picks up the uh, the deformation and the normal of the deforming piece of geometry under it. So it's something like point on surface on NURBS, it sounds like he was using. So um, yep, I can definitely show you a couple ways of doing that. One thing to keep in mind, there is a closest point on mesh command, which is actually really quite powerful. So you could tie this into the particle system really easily if you wanted to make something that was kind of elaborate with your own user definable variables. And it, it can query back um, the normal of the piece of geometry for that closest point on surface. So that's one way of doing it. I'm actually going to show uh, another way that I think is a little bit uh, quicker and, and a little bit less uh, involved but it essentially does very similar things to what the closest point on mesh would do. So I'll build up the particle system workflow, and then I'll, I'll show you a few ways of doing it without particles, because um, you know, I, for a lot of these things, I don't think I would want to be doing this with a particle system. I'd use something like XGen, or I'd hijack the hair system. So I'll show you two different alternatives to using the particle instancer um, after we get through this, this first example. So let's just go ahead and check out what we have going on in the scene, the way I have it set up. So I've got a piece of geometry. It's got the texture deformer that was added in 2015, um, just kind of giving the surface some deformation at the vert level, and that's just using the ocean shader tied into that texture deformer. So that's all pretty straightforward, or the ocean texture, I should say. So what we want to do is we want to get particles first attached to this piece of geometry. So that's, again, very simple to do. We're going to go to our particle system, and we're going to emit that from the object, and I'm going to make sure that I have turned on need parent UV. So that's really important because that basically um, records the position of where the particles are being birthed from on this piece of geometry, and it allows us to, uh, to use that information to pin those particles down to that birthplace which is exactly what we want to do. So uh, if we jump into our channel box here, or our attribute editor, if you didn't have that turned on by default, it's underneath the basic attributes. So just, you know, either way. If it was there, great. If it wasn't, then you can just turn it on in the attribute editor. So I'm going to just keyframe these particles on just for a couple frames here. So it just emits particles or kind of blasts them out right right at the beginning of our, of our animation. And if we play this back, you know, OK, great. There, there those particles go. And we'll just make them. Uh, a little bit easier to see by making them into some sprites here, or I'm sorry, some some spheres. So there those particles are, and obviously they're not attached to that piece of geometry at all. So that's that's the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to tie those particles to this piece of geometry using a goal. So we'll just say particles, you know, you select the particle, select the object, the particle, create a goal. So with that goal made, and we play it back, now what happens is those particles are birthed that they're you know on the piece of geometry, but over time, they try to reach that goal, and there's a little bit of a kind of bounce that happens. And basically, what happens is, you know, particle ID one tries to get to vert one, particle ID two tries to get to vert two with the default settings, which you know that's that's cool, that works well, and that might give you the effect that you're trying to get to. But for this example, really, what we want to do is we want to have those guys just just tagged onto where they're born from. So I'm going to put that. Um, that goal weight up to a value of one. So now instead of having that little bounce, they're just going to instantly pop there. But obviously, we want them being popped to their birthplace, which was that parent U and parent V parameter that was turned on at the emitter. So if we go to our per particle attributes, you can see that there already is a parent U and a parent V. So all we have to do is get that goal for the U and the V and tie it to the parent U and parent V. So those attributes aren't here by default, these per particle attributes. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, you know what? We're going to add a new per particle attribute for goal, u and goal v. So each particle's u and v position we can set using an expression. So we'll go ahead and we'll add those in there. And what we're going to do is we're just going to take the goal u and the goal v, and we're going to do a creation expression. So this is an expression that runs at the creation or birth of the particle. So what we want to do is we want to have um, particle one goal v be equal to um, particle one parent V. So I'm just going to copy that, highlight it, hit control C, go back to my um, particle one goal V and drag it down here. So we're just going to say that is equal to my parent V. And I just, that's because I did that copy paste. It just allows me a really quick way of, of, you know, filling that guy in. So now what we'll do is we'll just copy this guy and we're going to do the same thing for the U. So again, this is a per particle, uh, per particle expression that we're writing. So if we just make this guy be U, Oops, I can delete that V there and make this one be a U. And we just say create. Now, 
if we play back our little wave, obviously those particles are born, uh, the position's been uh, recorded, and then it's basically shoved into the goal U and the goal V for each particle. So they, they stick to where they're born. Awesome, exactly what we want. So the next thing we want to do is get this instancing thing happening. So let's just go ahead and create, uh, you know, like a simple polygon object, and we'll just add onto this guy an existing material, you know, like Lambert 2 or something. So we'll just do something like that. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to create an instance on this. So we'll grab this particle and we're going to say, you know what? We want this particle to be where every, or this, this piece of geometry to be where every particle is. Pretty straightforward. Now you'll see there's lots of options down here for rotation. And right now we don't have a mechanism for recording the normal of where those particles live. So we're just going to leave that stuff blank. We're going to build up the little mechanism to record that normal. And we're going to have that ultimately drive the aim direction. So Bear with me, you'll see it happen in just a second. So we'll go ahead and we'll create that, and we'll play this back. So now we've got our instance geometry tracking, looking great, but really what we want to do is we want to get something that we can use that aim direction on that instancer to, uh, to drive based on the normal. So here's the thing that's kind of cool. Now, I, I could have built that up, you know, using using this closest point on surface. You know, I you, you could definitely build up the, the ability to query the normal underneath each particle with that guy, but you don't have to go through all that trouble because Maya conveniently lo um, records out the normal information if you have goals recorded. So that's awesome. So what we're going to do is notice that I don't have it down here. I don't have anything that, that has anything to do with normals at a per particle level down here right now. But if we go back up to this area where the, the, the goals are for the objects and we say goal point normals and we just say, you know what, create that for me. Boom. Now if we scroll down here, you can see goals world normal per particle so everywhere that normal everywhere that goal is happening we're now recording the normal at a per particle basis that we can use if we go back up here to our rotation options on our uh, instancer we can use that to drive our aim direction so pretty straightforward tie that guy in there and play this back so now our geometry is uh Looking pretty good, but you'll notice, I'll let it just let it play back here, and hopefully, you can see like every once in a while, and I hope Cam Kasia pecks it up, there's like a little weird pop happening, right? And that's because, you know, we gave it a name, a name direction, but we haven't supplied it with an up axis or an aim axis or anything like that. So that's the last thing that we want to do is we want to give this aim axis just a, a per particle, you know, little, little thing. I, I want it to tie to the Y. So there's no option for that inside of here. You know, like there's, there's nothing that's, that's going to give me a nice, Y up aim axis. So we're just going to jump back down to this per particle array attribute, create a new one, and I'm going to create just a simple vector. So there's a user vector one. That's great. We'll say okay with that guy. So this user vector one, again, we'll do a creation expression. We'll grab this, copy it, jump down here, hit return, paste it in there. So that user vector one is going to be equal to um, just zero, one, zero, and then close that dude off and tidy it up like that. So we'll just say edit on that guy, close this down, and play it back. And now you can see that, you know, they're gonna, oops, nothing's happened because we just made the attribute, but we haven't tied into the aim direction. So one last step is to go back up here and say, for our aim axis, that's going to be equal to that new sweet little Y up thing that we made. So now, if we play it back, we've got really nice solid you know, nobody's bugging out, nobody's flipping around, everything does uh, does what you'd want. So that's great. If, if there's a reason you wanted to do this with particles and have it dynamically driven, there you go. That, that'll, that'll, that'll do it for you. Now, like I said before, I, I probably wouldn't do it with particles and instancing if it was something that was just simple, you know, geometry that I wanted pinned onto a certain piece of uh, deforming geometry at a given point or, or even arbitrary instance geometry, I'd use something like XGen. So just to walk you through an XGen example really quick, we'll just kind of blow this stuff away and we can blow that instancer away. You know, I, I would just grab my object and I'd jump in here to XGen and, you know, XGen is, is really, it's really great at doing this kind of arbitrary instancing stuff. That's, that's what it's made for. So I'd say, you know what, let's do, um, let's do spheres just because they're fast and easy to work with. And instead of being randomly across the surface, I'm going to say at points that I'm specifying, and I'm going to use guides to place those guys. So let's just say create on that. So now I can go in here and I can grab this uh, add guide button. And everywhere I click, you know, boom, boom, boom. I've now got these new particle or these new instance geometry, these instance spheres. And I could switch their type from spheres to guides or splines even. You'll see the, the normal being, being tracked there. So now if we play this back, 
you know, XGen is is tracking the geometry and tracking the normal and putting it right where I want. So you know, that's that's all that's all pretty sweet. All right. So and obviously, if you wanted to go back to guides or or go back to uh, an archive piece of geometry or a card or a, a, you know a spline, you you could. So it's pretty straightforward, right? Um, that that's one way that I would definitely approach it. So another way of doing it would be to uh, to kind of you think another way of doing it would be to use geometry paint. So geometry paint's actually really pretty cool, but it's not going to do exactly what we want. So I'm going to show you I'm going to show you why why it doesn't work, but. I just want to bring your attention to it because a lot of people don't, we know, don't even know we have geometry paint. It's under bonus tools, under modify geometry paint tools. So you give it the name of the node in your outliner that you want to paint with. Pretty straightforward there. The density of the grid. So, you know, we could put this a little bit lower and it's going to space them out a little bit more. And make sure that your object that you're painting on has its transforms zeroed out um, because if it has like a weird scare value, when you paint, the objects will, will pick up the scale value of, of the object that you're painting on, and like my if my cubes would be the wrong size, and so just make sure that you know your your value for scale is zeroed out. And now you can just sort of you know paint where you want those guys to be. And because I have a line turned on and I have attach turned on, you'd think, well, that's cool. They've aligned to this piece of geometry and they're attached to it. So if I play it back, they're going to go along for the ride. The problem is they don't pick up CV deformation. They're actually attached at the kind of if we rewind to frame one here, you'll see that. They're attached at the transform level, not the uh, not the CV level, so that's not so good. So let's go ahead and um, you know blow those guys away, and I'll show you how to tie these guys on, which will be really really great. All right, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to uh, look at how we can hijack the Hera system. So this is also another really kind of kind of cool way of uh, getting geometry to stick where you want it to. So if you remember while ago I showed some some hair stuff and one of the things I talked about is the follicle and it kind of it goes along for the right of the geometry and it's actually tied to it um, like a little group so we can actually hijack that to use it to to pin objects onto uh, onto stuff really nicely so if we take this piece of geometry and we just jump into our uh, our create hair tool and say let's tell it to paint the um, hair follicles I'm going to tell it to just have NURBS curves instead of uh, paint effect stuff on there. So with that done, again, you can specify the density of, of, of that and the brush size. So I'm just going to paint a couple follicles. So I'll paint a follicle there, and I'll paint a follicle over there, and we'll just hit return on that guy and close it down. So now what we've got is, um, you know, we've got some dynamic NURBS curves on there, which, you know, that that's fun, whatever. We don't really need those NURBS curves. Really what I'm, what I'm interested in is if we zoom in here, you can see that, that little follicle right there. That follicle is is tracking. I'm gonna delete those nerves curves. That follicle is tracking that piece of geometry, you know, which is awesome. So I can use that follicle to uh, as a as a constraint. So I could say, you know what, I want I want that little follicle to uh, to make my cube go along for the ride. So I'll select the cube. I'll select the follicle, and I'll just do a simple constraint animation constraint parent tell it to preserve maintain offset. Turn that guy off. Um, and just like that, you know, we've now got an object tracking the piece of geometry um, exactly the way you'd want it to, which is which is awesome. And obviously, if I move the geometry, you know, it goes along for the ride. So, you know, if you do it with a particle system, you can't just deform the geometry and move the geometry. If you do it with this sort of hijacked hair system with a constraint, you know, it's not a it's not a sim that you're running to to pick up that deformation and have the particle update its movement frame by frame. It's it's I think a little bit better way of doing it. So the other thing that's kind of cool about this is uh, there's a really nice little script and Dave wrote this script. So DJX blog, great blog. He hasn't updated it in in a little bit, but there's still just some great stuff in here. And one of the ones that I really like is this DJ Rivet Mel, which is again um, just automating this workflow. So if we grab something like, you know, this cube and let's just say uh, zero this dude out really quickly on its rotation. Let's say I position it somewhere and I want to have it stuck to uh, stuck to a thing. Instead of trying to manually build a hair system up and whatever, I can just grab the object, grab that object and just run the DJ rivet command that I downloaded off of his site and boom, just like that. It's now, oops, had the wrong selection order down there. So let's let's undo that. Let's grab you. 
and then grab you. And let's redo that DJ rivet. And now if we play it back, you know, we've got that guy going along for the ride. So again, all it did was it, it took the cube, it put a parent constraint. Oh, it looks like I did do it right the first time. It put a parent constraint inside of that guy and tied it to uh, tied it to a follicle. That follicle, you know, obviously finds the closest point to the mesh that it was on, and you know, it just just works really nicely. So a couple ways of doing it: one manual, one using the DJ Rivet uh, little little mail script, and hopefully that makes sense to you guys. I really appreciate you taking the time to uh, to watch Maya Mondays, and cheers, everyone.